King Solomon's Ring In Jewish mythical literature, a ring bears its power due to its divine inscription. In the Zohar, God even has a signet ring. In the Babylonian Talmud, King Solomon had a magic ring which allowed him to talk to animals and control spirits and demons. One day, King Solomon lost his ring in the waters of the River Jordan. Now, who would go into the River Jordan with the most powerful item they have? Also, who goes into the River Jordan, period? Anyways, it's said that a fisherman returned it to him. If that man wasn't showered in rewards, I don't even know what honor is anymore. Solomon took the ring with him to his tomb, which nobody has found yet, but it is said that he who does will rule the world. Number 9. The King Moor Ring This ring and its replica are a total mystery. The ring was, according to legend, found at Greymoor Hill. Its finding was rather ordinary. A young man was working on a fence in the early 1800s and found it in the ground. The ring was gold, of about 27 millimeters in diameter. He turned it in to historians thinking little of it. However, another ring, called the Brahmamore Ring, was found in West Yorkshire in the early 18th century, and the inscriptions on them both have been impossible to decipher. Overall, there's something very magical about them. Their inscription may have something that refers to stopping bleeding, which could talk about some kind of healing power the ring may have. Overall, the existence of the two rings can't be found much of anywhere, and maybe that's the most powerful part of it all. Number 8. Sir Yvonne Medieval Ring In the 12th century romance The Knight of the Lion, a ring is given to Sir Yvonne by a maiden. The ring can be adjusted to allow the wearer, as we saw in cases previous, invisibility. All the knight had to do was turn the ring with the stone on the inside facing the palm when the hand was in a fist. It was given to Yvonne so that he would have no reason not to come back to his lover, Laudine, unless that reason was that he didn't love her anymore. <laughs> that sure takes the guessing game out of love, doesn't it? Faith is also important in the ring's operation because the user must trust in the maiden's words. Before he puts the ring on, there is no direct evidence that the ring will work as she stated. Courage is necessary because while the wielder is invisible, he is not ethereal and he needs to remain still to not give himself away. Number 7. Gareth's Ring In the 15th century epic La Mort d'Arthur, or The Death of Arthur, a character named Gareth is given a ring which makes him not just invincible, but actually invulnerable to losing any blood at all. This would be a top-selling medical device, I'll tell you that. The dame said to him, I will give you a ring, but I would pray you as you love me heartily, let me have it again when the tournament is done, for that ring increaseth my beauty much more than it is of himself. Also who that beareth my ring shall lose no blood, and for great love I will give you this ring. Hmm, it seems to be a trend that a lot of damsels have really powerful rings they're using for beauty that could be used in battle. Do you think this could be some sort of metaphor? Number 6. Percival's Ring This ring is definitely one you want to have in your jewelry box. In Sir Percival of Gallus, a 14th century tale, the hero, of course, Percival, takes a ring from the finger of a sleeping woman and replaces it with a ring he had on his finger. Maybe as a glass slipper situation, like a come-get-your-ring type of excuse to see the woman again. Hmm? I don't know. He then goes off on some adventures that include defeating an entire Saracen army in the Land of Maidens. Spoiler alert, he realizes toward the end of the story that he does not actually have crazy skills. It was just his ring that made him invincible. Number 5. Howard Carter's Ring of Protection Howard Carter may not seem like a mythological name, and, well, that's because it's not. It's a very real name of the archaeologist who discovered the tomb of King Tut in 1922. King Tut's tomb was supposed to have a curse, which people were surprised did not affect Carter. How could it be? Was the curse not real at all? Well, that's a mystery, but he had been wearing a ring he found in the tomb of a priest called Jua in Aswan. Some say the ring, later bought in 1860 by an Egyptologist, was what protected him through what many said was a curse of sure death. 
The ring had geometric figures on it and was meant to be used as protection from danger, curses, and black magic. Do you think it worked in the case of Howard Carter, hmm? Number four, Draupnir. In Norse mythology, Draupnir is a gold ring possessed by the god Odin with the ability to multiply itself. Every ninth night, eight new rings drip from Draupnir, each one of the same size and weight as the original. Draupnir was forged by the Dwarven brothers Broker and Eitri. Broker and Eitri made this ring as one of a set of three gifts, which included Mjolnir, or Thor's hammer, and Gulenbursti, a boar which had bristles in its mane that glowed in the dark. Number 3. Charlemagne's Love Ring Charlemagne, the king of Franks and Holy Roman Emperor, fell in love with a German woman so deeply that he started neglecting his other affairs to be with her. When the woman died, he kept worshipping her dead body and refused to bury her. It's said that the love was unnatural, that no great man could love this fiercely, leaving aside his responsibilities. One day when Charlemagne was away, Turpin, an archbishop, entered the room and took the precious ring he found on the hand of the corpse. Once the ring was gone, the dead body was no longer kept fresh, and Charlemagne returned to a body he no longer wanted. He buried it, but then strangely turned his attention to the archbishop, who, shocked, threw the ring in the lake. According to legend, Charlemagne fell in love with the lake and built a large palace near it. Now that's what I call a powerful ring. It made the great Charlemagne fall in love with two people and a lake. Number 2. The Ring of Gyges Harry Potter fans are sure to like this ring, as Plato said in his second book of the Republic that the Ring of Gyges gave invisibility to the person who wore it. What would you do wearing an invisibility ring? You might be like the shepherd Gyges who, after finding it in a cave, used it to seduce the queen. That's pretty bold. I wonder if he tried anything else before heading straight to the castle. Hmm, like spy on a neighbor first or something. Get some practice, you know? Then go for the big bucks. Eh, who knows. Regardless, in the story, after seducing the queen, he actually killed the king and replaced him as ruler. Number 1. Genghis Khan Ring Genghis Khan ruled over Mongolia in the 12th century. He had a ring with a ruby engraved with a symbol that some believe to be magic. He and his nephew both wore it on their right hand, on the forefinger. Genghis Khan was a man without education, but ended up leading an empire. There are theories out there that this couldn't have been done without the ring. The symbol on it, some say, is from the long-lost continent of Hyperborea. It's a dextrogere swastika, which, though used by Hitler long after, was a symbol meant for positive effects. Genghis Khan's ring has never been found, but archaeologists are still looking for it.